Hello, everyone. This is part eight of the uh, um, the combination relationship, the start to start and finish to finish relationships, and also the uh, the comparison between the interruptible versus the contiguous activities and their remedies. So, uh, with the combination relationship, the the, the, the power pass you have two different finishes, one resulting from the start to start relationship and one resulting from finish to finish relationship. So one date has to be accepted as it's been the driving activities uh, or driving uh, type. And the second one is rejected due to unrealistic uh, uh, procedure. And the same goes for the backward uh, as well. So we've talked about the interruptible and contiguous activities, but let's actually uh, understand the differences between them and how do we utilize them. So for the interruptible activities, as you can see from this slide here, A is completely critical activity, but B has <clears throat> um, a finished restricted um, dates, in other words, B must be completed at 10. The same goes for C. And also for the lags here, finish to finish, they must also, they must finish. B must be done when A is done, and C must be done after B is done with a lag of one. But also when you look at B and C, the start dates are flexible so as the, the lags of the start to start, they are also flexible. So all these uh, discrepancies and differences uh, are all in the interruptible activ uh, activities as opposed to the uh, contiguous activities, which what we uh, are looking at at the bottom, they don't have uh, a restricted start, uh, start or finish date yet they have uh, they have complete uh, critical activities uh, but then the last could be either uh, critical or could be flexible it depends so what is the double restricted float the double restricted float is paired by definition is an activity uh, uh, is the amount of time we have to delay the, uh, the rest of the work in that activity after it has started. Then finish on time without delaying the entire project. Uh, when you look at the early start, it's two, early finish at 10, they have this, this activity must start on, on date two and finishes at date 10 for an interval of eight of a duration of a three. Um, so this is an uh, interruptible activity uh, for an interval of eight days you can uh, you must start at day two and must finish at day 10 and then you have one day left because it's a three days duration then you can uh, work on this day or utilize this day within the eight days interval so then you can delay this day uh, However, you, you find it appropriate for your project, but you have to stick with those two restrictions, start and finish. More definitions on the float is unrestricted float of an activity is the amount of time we can delay all the part or all or part of that activity without delaying the entire project. Uh, total float here in this context is the combination of restricted start, finish, and double restricted and unrestricted floats. So this is how we refer to the total floats. So then um, for a contiguous activity, uh, as you can see here, the, uh, the start to start here is uh, optional or non-critical, but the start to start between B and C, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a definite and uh, must fall under this restriction with a lag of three. The same goes for finish to finish without lag, but here is 
uh, uncritical. While the uh, interruptible is that when you have your starting date at zero, uh, it's a must, then your start to start um, at B with a lag of two is at two. And for a three, it must start at a three and it must finish at 12. But your finish to finish are flexible. That's for the interruptible, but for the contiguous, just like we explained it, uh, you have lags uh, start to start restricted, uh, excuse me, flexible and finish to finish between uh, B and C are flexible, but, but the rest are critical and must uh, take uh, its time uh, as specified uh, here. So then what's the remedy? Uh, there is remedies actually for, uh, for each one of them. So for the interruptible activities, um, we have two approaches to, uh, to go by. The first one is to trace the activities that have restricted the flows until they fill the restricted duration. In other words, it's eliminating the restricted flows. And uh, in other words, so you can have, for instance, A, it must start here with a duration of 10. Um, the rest is flexible. So you have two days, you started at zero, you have one and two, those are flexible and you can stretch your uh, work um, until any, any specified time. The same goes for the C here when it must start at five and must end at uh, 12. So you can stretch the activities if it doesn't have restriction, but if it does, then the rest of the, uh, the duration could be stretched. The second approach is when you have uh, a split activity. So for B, uh, B has six days duration, right? Uh, but it must start at day two. So then we start the day two, we continue to, until a certain amount of time, then we, uh, we split the activity and then we can continue until we finish it. And since it's a, a flexible finish, then we can uh, either, we, even we can stretch it up to actually here, I mean, meaning shift in it, I mean, up to here. Uh, and delay this days one or two it depends but for c it must start at five and must end up at 12. now for the contiguous uh, there is nothing we can do because uh, a must start at day zero, must end at day 10. However, we're flexible on the lag of B. So yes, it must start at four. We can give it a lag of, of two, but in this case, we have already four days um, for B to start. So uh, we, are, we are good in this manner, since two here is less than four, which is, uh, offering us a lot of, uh, well, which offers us a lot of time, which is four days for B to start. Um, now for C and B, uh, they are flexible on the finishes, uh, finish to finish. So, so as you can see here, B and C don't have to end or be done at the same day because it's a flexible uh, from the finish to finish relationship here, as you can see. And uh, for C, it must start at seven days and finish at the 14, while B must finish at 10. So with that, I'll stop here.